I say yes after one second ask me this question. Not even, uh, I, I, I didn't ask nothing. I just say yes, please tell me when, uh, when I need to prepare my baggage again and restart. My personal motivation was always, okay, I go there to see new ingredients, to see how people eat, how people live, uh, how they cook their own food. I was, I, I know that uh, everything was different from Europe. I, I remember the question, when he, the first question who, who asked to me was, you was executive chef in China. Why you want to come back here for a sous chef speciality? Welcome back to the Chef JKP podcast. And on the show today, we have an incredible guest. He is the head chef of the Michelin starred Armani Ristorante, Giovanni Papi. Giovanni, welcome to the show. Good morning, James. Welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. So, first thing is first. I know that you're Italian. Yes. So, I want you to tell me your first or favorite ever food memory as a child as a child um, still today my food memory is definitely two dish that i still uh, remember and i still one of these having in my menu uh, today it's definitely uh, the pasta al pomodoro from my mother's side uh, it was the everyday meal uh, since we was child and the second one it was from my father's side my grandmother dish was the couscous and they tell you why this couscous recipe. Um, my mother, grandmother's side was uh, Sicilian origins, but immigrated in uh, Tunisia at that time. Uh, we talk about maybe uh, 60 years ago. So uh, once the, the civil war came, of course, all the uh, foreigner people for Italian and everything was uh, sending out from the city. Mm -hmm. And of course, the family went split. So my auntie went to France and my grandmother went to Sardinia, my hometown, wow. where uh, my father born. And uh, that's why this uh, culture of food uh, came from. Wow. So t tell me, first of all, about the Pomodoro dish. What's so special about that for you? Very simple dish, pasta al pomodoro, but so incredible, uh, patient and patient to, to prepare it, you know. Uh, Pasta al pomodoro was the everyday meal, uh, very simple, and was uh, available every lunch. Uh, but not only in the lunch, but also, you know, the takeaway food in the afternoon. And it was super good once it's hot and once it was cold. Um, and my grandmother used to cook every day uh, at home. Wow. So today I really carry on this uh, recipe. Uh, once I get chance to come back home, because my grandmother's, uh, from my mother's side is still there. She cooks today uh, still. And uh, this dish is in my menu, current menu. I love that. Today. <laughs> I love that. It's on the menu. That's <laughs> it's amazing. It's on the menu. Yes. And then what I, I quite like, and, and I was obviously I wasn't aware, um, the couscous. I really like that. So what's special about the, the specific couscous for you? You know, um, we talk about since uh, a young age, uh, seven years old, I used to spend a long time with my grandmother's side, uh, father's side, because my parents at the time work. Uh, uh, my, uh, my father was to work in the nightclub like barman, mm -hmm. so they used to work in the night. And me, of course, I would stay with my grandmother uh, um, to sleep to, yeah. at home. Uh, the couscous was the dish of the Sunday. You know, uh -huh. this was the famous uh, family meal, which all the family come in the house and uh, share. The Italian cuisine is all about sharing food, uh, stay together, sharing meal. Uh, the long preparation. So we used to wake up uh, maybe four o'clock in the morning no. to have <laughs> breakfast together. At the time, I was only me and her because mm -hmm. uh, uh, his, his husband was already passed away. Me, I didn't know my grandfather. He just passed away one year before I, I you were born. I was born. Uh -huh. So uh, she started, you know, a big process in terms of 
cleaning the vegetable, wash the meat, prepare the meat and everything. And me, after the breakfast was 4.30 to 5 a.m., I used to sit on the table and watch my grandmother starting to all this process preparation. Start this early morning to have the food ready for one o'clock. Oh you know, my we talk God. about long cooking, very low fire, you know, this vegetable. A lot of love. A lot of love. I mean, there is no boiling in the, in the water. It was just a simple uh, low fire, you know, and the vegetable, the meat will used to cook uh, all these hours until, uh, until one o'clock. The time was uh, lunchtime and the food was ready. So we used to stay there and admire this uh, this process you must have actually learned a huge amount during that time yes i mean you, you probably were not even thinking about it then but but you must have learned so much and and spent such valuable time a lot of time yes uh, spend a lot of time with uh, with her and after i start you know just do simple things like uh, pass her the vegetable uh -huh. and uh, uh, admire her uh, washing the vegetable and start, you know, the semola. Yes. The bleu. Semola was working with very kind, you know, you know to uh, have the warm water, put a little bit of water, massage the semola to make the grain, you know, to, wow. to, to the next step, to the steam and after the cook. They have this uh, pan, you know, for the, uh, um, for the couscous. Mm -hmm. You have this three saucepan, one boiling, one steam, and on top, of, on top the vegetable. So everything was cooked in one single uh, uh, oh pan, God. divided into three steps. And after, of course, you will open the, you remove the vegetable, you have the meat, you remove the meat, you have the semola, semolina. Wow. And after, of course, you will mix together everything, and it was just... Uh, uh, amazing how, how amazing. fantastic it was uh, how fantastic yeah so then as you were getting a little bit older sort of um, as a teenager what were your sort of day-to-day -day or go-to foods sort of growing up was definitely not uh, difficult for me to choose my currently job so since that time I already know that from when I was grown kitchen was uh, he's been my my work my patient. So, so you wanted to, you knew I, you wanted to be in the kitchen. Since the time, uh, the patient was growing in me, okay. seeing this uh, this feeling with the food. Wow. Uh, so that's why I, once I was growing, I have this. My mind was growing. Say, I want to do the cooking school, and become one day. Even of course, you you dream to become, but during the process, you don't know. Of if course. you really, because you know, life will put you in front of some uh, life, life things. No? Yes, but, yes. Um, definitely, uh, I start to work in the kitchen, starting with the cooking school. So, and, so how old were you when that started? Uh, my first experience in the kitchen was uh, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, first um, apprentice stage training in the cooking school first and how, and how long was the school how, how long was that course for Hello, the course hello, no was first government school which was five years but to be honest with you uh it was not too much practical it was too much uh, theory, theory and, and chefs uh, love theory <laughs> <laughs> i have this uh, uh refusing with the math mm -hmm. i was horrible in mathematics so it definitely was not for me this school <laughs> <laughs> so i have uh, at that moment it was between 17 and 19 years old in my hometown in boza uh, the regional the region was decided to open some regional uh, school of uh, hospitality okay so it was just a cooking and fmb uh, training for only three years and it was very less practical and a lot of, uh, very less technical, yes. a lot of practical. Right. So I have decided to quit uh, the first school and transfer in, in the second one. Okay. So I start there uh, to work in the chef. So I decide, I choose the cooking side, mm -hmm. of course. Naturally. Naturally. And the professor on this school was the executive chef in the, in the winter, of course that in the summer they used to work as executive chef in the hotel in the Sardinia, in the Costa Smeralda wow. in the north. So they was being contacted by the school, uh, bring them here to teach us uh, from, the, from the very beginning, 
uh, ABC of the, the base. So we start like this. Uh, the good point was after uh, the first year, the, the chefs, they bring us directly in their hotel to do the first apprentice stage. Amazing. Okay. So uh, after the first year, finish the scholastic year, mm -hmm. we start the first apprentice stage in the summer. So, so the first year, just so I understand, um, you were doing sort of the basics, yeah, right? Yeah. So knife work, exactly. Um, uh, understanding vegetables, going through different fish meats. Did you do pastry as well? A I, little bit. Uh, a little bit, not too much. I was we really was focused on uh, you know uh, cut of vegetable, right. all the kind of cut. Brunoise, Mirepoix, Julienne. Okay. And of course, so the classic the French. Very classic French. Uh -huh. Yes. This was the really beginning of the of the base. Okay. In the, in the school. Which is good because you need. Yes. This, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then, after you finished, what happened next? Finished these uh, uh, three years of uh, of school. I I got the um, uh, certificate. So certificates of Comi One. And really, after these three years, I start my first experience as a Kumiwa. In uh, my experience, start in the Costa Smeralda Hotel, in uh, Cala di Volpe Hotel. So between uh, four uh, four years, I've been working all in the summer season. Uh, so you already had a lot of experience. The first one was uh, as a Kumi, of course, and the job of the Kumi was uh, uh, not like today, which is everything is more easy, but that I you know. Uh, uh, muscles, uh, fish to the bone, fillet, very basic uh, stuff from the school, which is today I, if I thanks this because we cannot be a chef without pass from the very beginning base. Correct. Um, yeah. So then you did all of this, but what I'm particularly interested in is how you went away and started working at the kitchens of Alain Ducasse. Because I think this is quite big, you know, it's to work big. with somebody or, or to work, especially within the kitchens of someone so iconic. Yeah. How was that experience for you? Was that in Italy or was it in France? It was, uh, it was in France. Why? Because uh, in Italy was only work, I was work uh, only in summertime. In winter time, I was at home. So after uh, the third se summer season, I have decided it was not enough work only on the summer time. So I have start. I start uh, my first target. Come, you know, when I understand that this job was really what I want to do in my life, I want to really take seriously. Mm -hmm. And French, of course, after the Italy, have learned of the basic of my roots. Because what I always say before, go outside and learn other culture. We really need to know where we come from. And uh, my Italian culture, root, I have to know exactly everything about Italian cuisine. So I was ready to step out of it uh, from Italy. And the first city come in my mind was French, of course. Mm -hmm. So I have start, I start to search job in French. Um, and there, thanks for, uh, I, f I found one contact there, was which one, my until uh, live in Côte d'Azur. Mm -hmm. I really called her asking if it was a possibility to uh, host me in her house. And after me, I was preparing my CV and going around to search a job. Okay. I really want, was determined, determined to, to go in French and find everything. And that was your first um, travel abroad? Abroad in Italy. So it's yes. quite a beautiful place to go. Côte d'Azur. Côte d'Azur. France yes. is beautiful. Yes. Is, so um, that must have been quite nice for you, walking the streets. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like. yes, yes. The, the first uh, trip was uh, so scary. Mm. I was take the uh, really the baggage and go see my parents, you know, say <laughs> hi. It was quite scary yeah. uh, for the first time. Of because course. When I was in Sardinia, it was easy. Just one hour from my home. Yeah. Uh, it was very easy. So okay. nothing compared the first trip in French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. All the baggage. Uh, we, I go. I, mean, I don't know when we see you again. <laughs> uh, but definitely... I got this opportunity. My auntie say, come, uh, I will host you. Nice. And after I will help you to find something. Uh -huh. So I just take uh, uh, 50 CV. Wow. Few t-shirt in my bag. So the I... CV was in French? 
I, or in Italian? No, it was in Italian. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Well, in Italian, French is still, uh, uh, I didn't speak nothing sure, at the time. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> um, so, I went there. <laughs> I wow. went there. I went there. Um, it was just, uh, you know, uh, love at the first sight. Once I arrived there, the first two days, of course, I didn't do, I just rest. Uh, and I buy one little book with all the basic words in French. Okay, very good. This was the first. Mm-hmm. Um, I start to go around with my until, door by door, sending CV, uh, waiting for the first uh, call. We was uh, the city of Jualepan. Jualepan is just the heart of uh, Côte d'Azur. It's between uh, Nice and Cannes. Oh wow! It's very beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, yes, part Mediterranean of the world. Sea. Yeah. Antibes is very famous city. Yes, of course. Um, it's happened that the second, maybe the third door, uh, no mistake, the third door that we uh, give the CV, the second one, he just came out from the door and they call us. <laughs> I say, we have job for you. We have job for you. And this hotel was the uh, Hotel Joana in joie Hotel Joana is the hotel where Chef Alan Ducasse got his first stars two years before. Amazing. <laughs> so how, just, so ch- just lucky. Yes. Just by chance. I can say yes. I can say yes. It was by chance. By uh, wow. No, already, but I really was already determined to to enter in the French culinary world. Uh, I was so young, you know, I was uh, eighteen years old. And Giovanni, at that time, at eighteen, were you aware of of who Alain Ducasse was? Did, no, no, absolutely not. Wow. Uh, no, I don't know who Chef Alan Lucas was. Uh, the hotel where, where uh, I didn't start uh, straight away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wait maybe two weeks before okay. I start because the hotel was coming to close from the summer season. Right. And going into the high season. Uh, high season. Okay. And also, can I just ask, at that age or throughout your um, culinary education, were you aware about Michelin? Or not really? Not really. Not really. The time, uh, um, all what I understand was just cooking, uh, learn. But the Michelin, the high, 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 hot cuisine, I can say. Yes. He just come after over the my process. Okay. Yes. So then, after those two weeks, you joined that kitchen. Tell me about your first day. I was crying. <laughs> just this I start uh, this during these two weeks I will start to study French uh, that's why French is my first language that I learned after right. Italian okay. and after English came um, it was uh, a lot of feelings was there it was my first job out- outside of Italy it was uh, I was the only Italian person among the all French oh, chef tough <laughs> yes uh, tough. yes uh, the moment was quite uh, there the, the really challenge start. He's, this is the challenge start. Okay. The challenge with myself. I say, oh, you look back and you give up, or you look forward and you really push. start yes. start to push. And yes. yes. So this first day for the rest of uh, maybe three weeks, mm-hmm. it was uh, hard because the chef, all the team was there. Um, no one speak Italian. And uh, I'm not speak one word of French, <laughs> not even ciao. And the ciao was just <laughs> simple ciao. But the time I didn't know it was like this. Wow. So we just uh, communicate through body language. Right. I will give you the. I give you this vegetable. You just. I will show you one. You continue. Okay. It was like this. So first eight hours, uh, maybe ten, and after finish, go home, study. And I, my first uh, lessons on, on, on French was the, this, the vegetable, knife words, uh, chopping boards words, all the uh, culinary... The, again, the basics. The basics, but in French language. Right. This was the... So you had two major challenges, actually, if you think about it. You had to not only learn the language again, but you also had to learn the kitchen language and be in quite a established Michelin kitchen and 
you were the only Italian person there. So that must have been quite difficult. And as well as that, mentally, you were away from your family for the first time. Yes. So, of course, all of that put together is quite a difficult situation to be in, especially at 18. Yes. But uh, um, so what happened after those first initial sort of three weeks when you started studying and starting to get to know everybody? Yeah. Um, I still remember now uh, how the sous chef is introduced himself to me. So after the chef I came, he say, he didn't say his name. He said, I am the bad person in this kitchen. Nice to meet you. In French. Uh, in French, of course. I say, I'm Giovanni. <laughs> and I turned <laughs> my head. Say, I, and after this, I know his name, I think after two weeks after my apprenticeship mm-hmm. in this in this team. Okay. So it was quite difficult to speak with the because of course we know the French hierarchy was uh, discipline. Of course. Um, principally, I went there to to learn this, uh, form my character, uh, discipline, and everything. But of course, once you are in, you really feel this first step like this. The shock was quite um, positive away. Of okay. Course. Yes. Okay. Um, day by day, start with very basic things is the i see i think my first blue lobster after three weeks of work uh premium ingredient is there that i start you know uh, saint jacques scallops uh, oysters caviar is it in french that i yes. start to yeah. see this IT, high quality ingredient for the first time okay i can say so how how big was that restaurant at the time as in like how many seats uh you know was the restaurant restaurant gastronomique French, they have, uh, was the day maybe was fine dining, but right. in French, fine dining was not really used the word. At is that it? time? Yes. Yes. Uh, it was a restaurant gastronomique, mm-hmm. which is the restaurant with macaron Michelin. Right, or, right, right. Or, yes. No? So it's very simple, like 38 seat. Okay. Plus, of course, the kitchen was, uh, there is two kitchen, one for the guest of the hotel, breakfast, and one focus on the a la carte restaurant. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, of course, part of the team in a la carte restaurant, uh, doing, uh, you know, scale the fish. Uh, the, at that time, I even didn't touch the lobster. My duty was just to scale the fish, like Dorad, uh, Sibrim, uh, Red Mallet, you know, uh, Rouge Barbet. I still remember the... It was just scale, the bone, clean inside, but like maybe 20 kg of fish every day. Uh, so the challenge was to finish the task in a very short time. And how many hours a day were you working? Yeah, there we talk about um, uh, 8 a.m. until uh, maybe a little break and after uh, 11, 12, 11, 30, okay. 12 p.m. So it was quite, it was, so, it was a full on day. It was on full day. on, yes, full on day. Uh, so back home. St- sleep, study English, call home, uh, cry a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> and after uh, ready for the next day. Mm. So, so how long did you stay at that place for? That place I worked for six months. Uh, you know, I start to also the book was not enough, but you know how I I start to learn French. The, the day was the TV. I was one. I had one small TV in the room. There is this uh, uh, comic. Uh, French comic people was talking in the, mm, in the TV. Mm, mm. And I saw the public laughing and me, I was laughing with them alone in my room <laughs> without understanding nothing. <laughs> I was just uh, laughing. Because the, but you have to find a way. Yeah. You have to find a way to always learn and be with learn. the team. TV was always there, on, uh, speaking French. My, my book was there. So it was always on. The TV was on. Uh, Try to absorb all this word in, yeah. uh, in French. Yes. And also, you didn't really have anybody sort of teaching you yeah yeah so, just one during the day off i my until came because she they live in grass is one city uh just outside the Côte d'Azur so during half day i spend my half day with them right and uh, yes but the rest of the week i used to come back at work and focus uh, okay all the day there wow yeah so what happened after that stint where where was your next move hello is always uh mm, i finished the winter so it was quite a good season. Uh, Hotel Joana is, uh, I will always remember, because it's my first job in French. Um, I went outside to have one pizza, I remember, during my day off. Uh, it was already maybe April. So winter is, was finishing, starting the spring. Uh, I, I went out to eat, 
And I found a lot of uh, restaurant uh, stand alone. I just eat something. Uh, it was, uh, was one Italian restaurant at the time. Uh, I, I just order. Uh, I tell people was, uh, I was just in working there in Hotel Juana. Chef come out, it was uh, uh, an Italian chef. I say, but, uh, you know, our season is going to start soon. Our summer season is going to start soon. Uh, have you been interested to work with us for the, for the next six months? I say, look, uh, yes, I will be definitely interested to, to, to join your team. Uh, so the, that contract was almost finished in Hotel Juana because it just was a seasonal contract because the hotel was going to close. Um, I have decided to join this uh, Italian restaurant. So it was, again, it was maybe the time I have decided to come back uh, to something that I was more comfortable Yeah, through. familiar. Familiar, with, yes. you know. Uh, the time, the numbers was, you know, a restaurant in Côte d'Azur is uh, open only for dinner. You do big amount of guests. You replace the table two, three times. Uh, I was not really uh, into the... Find out. At the time, I was just trying to experience things, absorb uh, culture, you know, know people through food. So I didn't know exactly what I want to do if work on the fine dining restaurant or restaurant gastronomic or big, uh, big restaurant like two, three, four hundred packs every night. Okay. So it was just to, to adapt myself to the French uh, uh, the style, the hierarchy style. Yeah. 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 So, and you took the job? I took the job. Took and again, job it was there. seasonal? Yeah, it was seasonal. It was uh, April, May until end of September. So it was good because the, rest, the restaurant have uh, only for uh, dinner time, but the same owner have a few restaurants in the beach as well. Because Joao Pam is a beach place, plus there is, of course, a little center. And the restaurant was in the center, but... Uh, he offered me to do like extra on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if I was interested to work for lunch also in his restaurant in the beach. Because our my restaurant uh, my work was only for dinner in the in the center of the city. I say yes, definitely. Uh, I was all free in the morning. I say let's do it. I go to work, do some Italian dishes. Um, it was, you know, Côte d'Azur restaurant place was very busy for, uh, for uh, summertime. Uh, we talk about June, July, August, uh, but working just for, uh, you know, for 11 a.m. until 4. Finish the service, do like Italian salad, pasta. Uh, principally, I was there to do Italian dish. The rest of the team, Brigade, was French as well. And doing, you know, time. grilled fish, turbo fish, sharing style. Uh, this was the, the menu. The time. Okay. Yes. So after your stint in France, then you, of course you managed to learn the language yes. after some time, yes. which is good. But then I know that you traveled quite extensively. So tell me about the time that you sort of decided to travel again to go to places like Australia or China. Yes. yes. Um, see, the experience in French was doing good. That uh, at that time, it was uh, uh, Christmas approaching, and it was, uh, you know, uh, some maybe some missing family. I have decided to come back home. But when you go out from the first time, you know, you come back home, is uh, you don't want to stay too much in your hometown. Because I understand that uh, there, I really understand, you know, uh, discover the world. I always, what I always say is uh, I work in the kitchen because I love uh, know discover people throughout food. This is my personal philosophy. And that's why I decided to start to travel, to know, to discover the culture of the people through the food. And this is uh, it's just amazing uh, now. Uh, before Australia was, uh, was Luxembourg. So I, sp I have spent four years in Luxembourg. It was just Christmas time. I spent uh, the time with my family. But I start uh, how I found a job, all my job at, at home, make my CV and search internet uh, all around Europe, place to work. I really literally spend my winter, the time, uh, searching for job, sending CV. I can say maybe 50 CV every day, 
my mom was almost scared because I used to spend all the afternoon <laughs> in the computer. <laughs> I was not playing, just uh, search, uh, search email address from the restaurant, whatever it was. I, I don't even have, have plan of uh, hotel, restaurant. Uh, I just want to go out from my, home, okay. from my hometown. So you managed, again. you managed to, again, yes. secure a job in Luxembourg. Yes. And where was this job? What type of restaurant was it? So I found it after maybe, it was February. February, yes, it was winter. So I found one job after a thousand of CV that I have sent. You know, it was one day I was for lunch sitting and I received one call. I received a call. Uh, I even didn't know where Luxembourg was at the time. Tell you honestly, <laughs> <laughs> because there was a lot of CV that I've sent. Mm -hmm. I even didn't know that my CV was arriving in Luxembourg. Right. Uh, but the chef called me, and the chef at that time was Italian, working in one Italian restaurant in Luxembourg. I said, I got your CV. Uh, you have quite good skill in the pasta section. Uh, I am looking for chef the party in our team. The restaurant is in Luxembourg City. Uh, you will like Joy. I say yes after one second, ask me this question. Not even, uh, I, I, I didn't ask nothing. I just say yes, please tell me when, uh, when I need to prepare my baggage again and restart. Wow. Yes. So we did things very, I, in less than one month, also two weeks. I just advise my parents, say, um, I found a job in Luxembourg. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm going, off again. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave wow. uh, Luxembourg. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, I found a job in Luxembourg, of course. A restaurant was Italian restaurant. I stayed here for one year. Um, it was not in the center city of Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a state. It's a city and state. Um, the restaurant was Esh sur Alset, one city outside Luxembourg. But it was good for me to enter and try to adapt myself in this new world. So the restaurant was good. Uh, was as a chef de party, pasta fresca. I have, uh, I have the possibility to do like fresh pasta, fresh ravioli. It uh, was a good team at that time. But my goal after uh, uh, this year was during the, the, the half day, I go into the center. Was my, my goal was move into the center, so in the business area of uh, Luxembourg. Right. Uh, so after this one year, I've moved because I, I stay for almost four years in Luxembourg. It's three and a half year. Was, uh, so you must have liked it. I like it, yes. Uh, because can, it's, it's quite yeah. some time to, yeah. to stay. Yeah. Luxembourg was very is beautiful city, so workplace was very good, comfortable. Uh, I'm learning a lot. Uh, and after this first job, I have found a job in another, another French restaurant. Oh, so you went back to France? I'm back to French restaurant. Okay. There, I really uh, went to uh, perfection, you know, the technique of a sauce, uh, of a restaurant gastronomique. It was good. Uh, two years in this restaurant. But I understand it was not enough. Because I was uh, studying. The time I start to study uh, kitchen, not only work, but also study at home, open book, read about famous chef, you know, French chef, uh, mentors. Um, I, I didn't really work with the great chef in my career, but I have experienced different restaurants. One day I found out one uh, announced job, uh, job offer in Australia. I said, you know what, I will try this. I didn't have uh, even the passport at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was very good. Uh, I have a nice little apartment. Uh, I, bought, I bought my first car in Luxembourg. Uh, I applied in Australia, and the day after, I found the reply email. I just sent the email with my CV. Not even letter. Eh? I just sent the email. You just sent the CV. I just sent the CV in the email. Uh, I didn't know about the reference letter. Right, uh, the cover letter. I, I didn't know. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, the chef there was recruiting people to open a new restaurant in the, in the beach side on, a, on in front of the Pacific uh, Ocean. It was the uh, coast of uh, Brisbane coast. In the morning, when I opened the email, I found this email. The chef said, oh, I'm interested in your CV. Uh, you would like to join me in Australia to, to be part of my team. I say, yes. <laughs> yeah, 
in two weeks, maybe I. So you had to fix the passport. I, I just apply, that's why my passport I did in uh, in Luxembourg because wow. I just fix in two weeks. I apply for passport and everything. Bang bang bang. Bang bang bang. In uh, in Australia, you know, was all working holiday visa at the time. Yes. So this was most easier uh, visa to to have, and between uh, thirteen years old. And ob- yeah. obviously, throughout your time, you'd been in Europe. Yeah. So, of course, Sardinia, beautiful part of the world. Côte d'Azur, beautiful part of the world. Luxembourg, also very beautiful. But then you're making a big move. Mm. It's a huge move to go to the other side of the world. Yeah. So how was it when you first arrived in Australia? He definitely reminded me of my first experience in French. Because same the time, <laughs> I didn't speak one word of English. Of course, and, def- and my colleagues was uh, was all uh, Australian. Australian, you know, Australian. And accent. the lang- the accent no? is very different. Uh, yeah, a very different. Very different. Uh, Brisbane yeah. and the Gold Coast is a beautiful part yeah. of the world, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, but that must have been quite eye opening for you. <laughs> the culture, the culture, very different. Yes, the work style. The, the kitchens. Yeah, communication. Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, once again, say we give you this ingredient, <laughs> I will show you one, and you just uh, do it. At the time, base was already there. But you were commie or you were chef de party? Uh, or? There, still, still for chef de party. Okay. Yes, I keep going on the chef de party at the time. Yes. So base was there. And how uh, big was the restaurant? The restaurant was just open and was uh, like 70 cover. Uh, lunch and dinner uh, and lunch and dinner yes yes it was one inside one resort of uh, the called uh, south stadbrook island okay which is an island uh, outside Briggs, being mm-hmm. the coast uh, the chef he brought me there was uh, italian okay. but he was just a recruiter oh so, so he, he, sent was... Me, he was he was not on the team in the team was australian chef there <laughs> he helped me a lot i went through these uh, days same, once again, maybe two weeks without understanding. Uh, the accent was... I, totally different. I was it forced, must have been like... I, sometimes I was forced to say yes without understanding nothing because yeah. I was scared to repeat. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Two, three times, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I don't really want to make upset uh, an yeah, Australian chef at the time. Yes. So I just say yes. And after maybe he saw me that I was wrong what I'm doing. <laughs> then, <laughs> he understood. I was, uh, yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> but, uh, but at least, uh, I mean... Australians are very friendly, very friendly. Gen- gen- you know, this, very friendly. It so. take me very. Uh, we we really make good, great connection. You know, I they I like them. They like me. You know, this genuine. Uh, so maybe this I was there just to learn. Really uh, determined to to learn their own culture. So um, beginning we start just to. You know, connection. We sure. say we have to do this. Uh, I start to understand, of course, uh, uh, the task to do, make the service working, and the service went very smooth. Never had issue on that. Okay. Yes, was uh, was great, great experience. Amazing. Uh, for uh, for uh, almost one year, because the working holiday visa was uh, for one year. Right. And uh, you know, six months you need to work, and after the next six months you have to do the farm if you want to get another year of uh, visa. At me, the time I was not really into the farms. I were I were, I were there to work in the kitchen. So I finished six months in uh, Brisbane, and I fly search some job, uh, another job between Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, but they reply to me, both uh, restaurant, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. And I have decided to quit my colleagues there to fly to Sydney, restart the experience there. I I make a very great connection in uh, Australia. But you know, Australia is always a tricky uh, nation because you make very great friends. But once you leave Australia, you maybe you will not going to see them very often. True. Maybe never anymore. We don't know. We, we're not going back to Australia. So I, I make very great connection there. And the, the time I left Australia was quite tough because you, you know that you're not going to see them uh, again. Or, so since the time, uh, it was a good experience. Uh, and yes, I, I finished in Australia. Sydney was uh, another French restaurant we call Bistro Guillaume. Again, back to, to the beginning. 
It was a great restaurant. It was in the middle of the street, uh, George Street, uh, quite busy. You know, lunch, uh, business lunch, 100 cover every day. Uh, very traditional French cuisine. But I did six years. So six I, uh, years? Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. sorry. Six, 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 six months. months. Six, six months. months. Okay. I finished okay. my working holiday visa. Okay. Um, that time, I was uh, almost ready to pack my items and go back to Europe. I say, you know, call the parents. Um, tell them I'm ready to come back. And I remember my mother say, okay, now you went to Australia, you come back, you not go any more far like this. Eh? I say, okay, sure, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Typical mums? <laughs> yes. You know, it looks like uh, something, someone listening this. I, received, I was ready to fly back and I received one call from one colleague to me that I was I met in Luxembourg. I said, Giovanni, how are you? I said, I'm good, I'm in Australia. I'm ready to back to, to Europe. I'm back to Sardinia. Let's see what, uh, uh, if I found something again, no? I say, I have something for you. Uh, you know, do you interested to, uh, you will be interested to work in China? I say, China? I say, no, man. I, I really literally was not thinking about this. You know, my, my idea was just back home. So your mind was already... Yes, fly back. You see, in China, I say, why you off you are in Luxembourg? Why you offered me this job? No, actually, I am in China now, working. He's an um, ice cream master. This is my friend. He's from Sicily. He do consulting uh, opening in the gelato. He's a very uh, professional in the gelato master. So this company in China is Italian company. Contact him to open his own uh, gelato gelato shop. Okay. So he went there. For one week to, you know, train the team, make his own recipe of gelato, very uh, high quality ingredient, you know, pistacchio from Sicily, nocciola del Piemonte, very high quality ingredient, he make the gelato. He said, you know, you know why? Because these people where I am now, they are asking for an Italian chef. They are looking for an Italian chef in their own restaurant in Shanghai. Uh, I was thinking about you. Hey, you know, when the idea, you are not thinking something, but after when they, they put you in one idea in your mind, after this idea start to move, start of to course, move. Of course, it in starts mind. to tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick, tick. So if you want, I give you the contact uh, with the owners and I let them to call you. I say, you know what, uh, we'll see five days maybe. Give me the time to come back uh, home. And, and yeah, definitely we, we're going to... Uh, to to, to speak with them. I say, well, now what are you going to say, my mom? I ah. say to her that I'm not going too far and now I'm going to work in China. It's even more far than this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I go back home uh, and these people call me. They offer me a job as a, was, was literally more above the, the position I was covering in Australia. Eh? Uh, they offer executive chef for, uh, and not only for one, but like five restaurants with different concepts. So it was Italian company. They have one Italian restaurant, one wine bar, tapa style, pizzeria, different concept of outlet they had. And they was looking one sh Italian chef in charge of all this concept. Wow. It scared me, the, this uh, opportunity. That's why at the beginning I say, you know, thank you for this. Uh, I spent the call with them, say thank you for this. I, not, I didn't say that my, what position I was uh, doing in uh, Australia, but I just refused. I say, I don't think I, don't think I really was fit for, the, for this high task. But they really keep me calling. Oh, they so they were, must have been very they interested. They must have been inter interested because also me, what I did, I sent my CV. Main time, I say, okay, let's send anyway the CV. Even I say no, but who knows? Mm. They keep calling me for, uh, I remember I left Australia was uh, August and for uh, two weeks in September, they keep calling me almost every day. Try to offer everything, everything they can to just make me accept the offer. Um, one the offer, one thing that he made me uh, maybe accept the offer was, okay, let's do something. You came here two weeks. You see how we work, how is our uh, philosophy, culture, and everything. If you like, you stay. If you don't like, you go back home. I say, okay, 
you know, uh, it makes sense. I will do it. Let's do it. So let's do it. So then you go to a metropolis like Shanghai. So for anybody who doesn't know about Shanghai, it's, I mean, 20, I, mean, I can't remember how many millions. I think it's 25 million plus. Mm, yes. Yes. It's a huge city. Yeah. I mean, it makes London look tiny. Really. I've, I've been. Absolutely. And um, it's so, Absolutely. it's a busy, busy place. Yeah. Bustling full on so how was that for you when you first arrived because yes. that must have been another shock <laughs> another and shock. you didn't speak mandarin <laughs> <No>. <laughs> still now wow. still now i did this was not like a french australia yeah but i don't even try to 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 understand uh, maybe one word like wow. uh, hi good yeah. morning yeah that's it not more more than that okay yes so you yes. arrived yes first two weeks how was it uh was again uh, my motive, my personal motivation was always okay. I go there to see new ingredient, to see how people eat, how people lives, uh, how they cook their own food. I was, I, I know that uh, everything was different from Europe. I mean, all the plants, but drastically different. Drastically different. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So I, I fly back to China. I remember the first trip was. Uh, I, I mistake the ticket and instead make a direct fly Rome uh, to Shanghai. Maybe because I was looking for some. Uh, so the first two weeks I went, uh, the company, if I, it, it bring me directly from Rome to Shanghai. Okay. Okay. Uh, and vice versa. We have come okay. back after two weeks. So the last two weeks, um, I arrived there. Of course, the owner take me in this restaurant. We speak, you know, make me comfortable to all the team. Everyone was uh, local, uh, Chinese, you know. Um, so the menu was, uh, okay, I, you know, tried the menu, what they serve in the restaurant already, start to really focus on uh, on work mode. Well, uh, I start to take note, uh, working, uh, see what we need to change, what is the next, my next move on this restaurant. Um, I stayed there for, for uh, 14 days. So every day working, the time was four outlet was open. Okay. So every outlet uh, have his own uh, chef, but the owner was not happy. So with, with this person. Okay. So that's why they really need one Italian chef uh, and especially young age. The time was already, you no, know, we talk about uh, 18 when I start China, I was already 27. Eh? So there is the process between uh, French, uh, Luxembourg, Australia, there is experience there already. And uh, wow. So, but did you yeah. have to, did you have to spend time in every single of those outlets? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So two days in the restaurant, the next two days I was in the pizzeria uh, the, the other day i was in the wine bar and everything with different concept menu was different so uh, but i see that there is potential uh, in me that i was uh, maybe ready to cover this position okay um, because yes i, I was come from uh, uh, chef the party but they say you know there is not really Italian culture here. And what I can uh, add from me is a uh, is, uh, Italian print. So Italian, classic, very classic Italian dish. And it was my first ever uh, menu that I start to implement in these restaurants uh, in the age of uh, 27, yeah. 27, 21 one and a half year I stay, I spend after. Because after the two weeks of trial, I, as, I have accepted the offer. So I fly back to home. Hi, mom. Um, yeah. Just uh... <laughs> Yes, again. <laughs> yes, it was, uh, uh, he say no. He say okay, you're going to fly again. Eh? Okay. I say yes. So she knows the time, no? <laughs> it was already <laughs> habit. Say, okay, we're not, we're not going to, we cannot stop you now. I say yes. Now, you know, the, the, my uh, DNA was already focused on work outside from my hometown. But travel, learning about Tra food. Yeah. Yes. Cultures. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I mean, it really seems that you love to do that. Yeah, I really love it. And every single travel I move, I made, it was always alone. The most tough 
uh, travel that to me was definitely the the travel to China uh, because the second time when I have to fly again for uh, all a year, I mistake uh, the ticket and it's the book one Rome Shanghai. <laughs> I don't know why. Before I arrive to Shanghai, I make three step only inside China. Oh wow! So I instead uh, spend seventeen uh, hours of fly. I think I spent 22 hours flying that time. So I, I land in the first country in China. I, I don't even remember. It was Anzhou or Guangzhou mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. So and when I, I, I landed, my voice was gone. Maybe because I didn't speak with anyone during all this fly. And when I tell them, I say, but why? There was a little surprise because I, I want to my, buy my own, the ticket. So you should tell us. We will put you just in one straight uh, flight. But I mistake something and, uh, you know, first landed in China, there is no English translator. Oh, my God. I just my instinct. What I have to admit, I have very great uh, sense of orientation. I always have. Maybe because I always travel alone. Yes. Even without to know the, the place, the people where I am, I have this, uh, you know, when, when something come naturally from you I say I have to go there maybe this ticket all uh, boarding pass everything in Chinese you land in one uh, Chinese airport everything is in Chinese not even uh, English translator because in okay big city like uh, Shanghai uh, Beijing course, yes, some, yes, some big yes. city there is but there is some <laughs> still uh, the English is not there I mean nobody speak English yet so all the internal people was uh, Chinese there. Literally, I didn't find one person to speak to ask information. That must have been quite <laughs> tricky for you. Yeah, yeah. First, second, another another Chinese country, and the third was the Shanghai. Okay. I say, man, if I'm not uh, now, I really can go anywhere in the world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I if survive on this, without I literally. Uh, land in Shanghai without voice. Amazing. And, no, <laughs> say, okay, we start. Uh, we start the experience. So then, you you had that phenomenal experience yeah. in Shanghai. Eighteen months. Of course, you succeeded within the concepts. You learned the culture. But then, if I fast forward, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, is when you first arrive to Dubai. Yeah. as a speciality sous chef at Ristorante Armani, which didn't have a Michelin star back then because yeah. there was no guide. Yeah. And you're not only in a beautiful restaurant, but the location is the tallest building on the planet. On the again, so going from China, traveling again to the Middle East, was it a culture shock for you or were you a bit more relieved because there were so many cultures here that you already knew? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I maybe like it, this uh, kind of shock. It was already start to be part of me. You know? mm. um, but I tell you, it's funny part of, uh, of my second time that I tried to, to Dubai. When I finished from uh, this, it was kind of training. In China, okay, my first experience as this high position, okay, uh, finish the experience, go back to home, because before go somewhere else, I always back of course. to home to restart again. Of course, um, it was my second time that I was start, uh, I was trying to apply into the the Armani Hotel, uh, because I, I think uh, during my uh, period of time to send a CV. The Everywhere. 50 CVs, yes. Yes. One of them was also Armani, because I was see like Armani Hotel in Dubai right, 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 before right, right. even uh, before even uh, fly to Australia. Okay. And I think I have sent the CV there, but of course he didn't, uh, I, I never have received any reply for this. So that's why I have decided, okay, let's go to Australia. This second time, uh, after China, I didn't have any other... Um, work after this. I just decided to finish um, and rest, rest, okay, what I go? I'm going to, to restart again, like always what I did when I was home. And my first uh, instinct was, I will try again to send the CV uh, in Dubai because the time 
I already start to see, uh, talk about uh, Dubai and Middle East, Dubai especially. I say, I will restart, I will try again. Uh, maybe it will, this time it will, I will have more chance. I don't know. Uh, I think I send again, go back home, uh, find some job offer all around the, the world the time and Middle East come, I send a CV to Dubai and I can say, I'm honestly with you, after maybe half an hour, I have received the, not even the reply in the email, but directly the call from plus nine zero nine seven one. Wow. one. Wow. Say, United, uh, UAE. Say, UAE. Say, mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, okay, I reply. At the time, the chef uh, was Italian. Uh, it was the chef from uh, Armani Ristorante, but at the time was Armani Daily, the Italian restaurant, uh, not Armani Ristorante. Before COVID, uh, Armani, we had two Italian restaurants. Was, was, one was uh, casual dining, and one was the fine dining, which is Armani Ristorante. The chef who called me was in uh, uh, holiday dining. So always Italian restaurant. I say, so your CV, um, I'm looking for sous chef. Uh, do you be interested? Even I know in your CV is mentioned high position from China. I say, honestly, uh, thank you for your call. I'm ready. Uh, I mean, it's not just uh, a name what I have in the CV, but I, please, I'm ready to step back and keep learning because all what I want to do is uh, keep learning, keep grow. Uh, and see, uh, continue, continuously uh, know, discover culture. Uh, and the chef is say, I'm, I, I, I'm interested on your CV. And we definitely, if you want, we can uh, proceed for the next step with our executive chef. Uh, and why not uh, proceed for the higher process? I say, yes, uh, yes, please. <laughs> I'm interested for this. And we... He started uh, the adventure there. The next call was with the executive chef. I was really formal speaking with the executive chef on the phone. The English was not really great at that moment. Uh, I remember the question, who, he, the first question who, who asked to me was, you was executive chef in China. Why you want to come back here for a sous chef speciality? I say, Chef, I'm really honest. I feel that I still have a lot of learn. I, I need to grow. I would like to keep growing, learn, and uh, be part of, of your team. Uh, it was really come from sincerely. I, I, chef was agree on that. Uh, it's quite a mature thing to do. Yes. You know? Yes, it was, uh, it's, and you have to take a, your, your ego, put to one side. Yeah. And, yeah. and really do that, but yeah. um, that, that, that's a lot of maturity. Never ask any extra question. Uh, what the question of the young generation today ask uh, uh, when they go into hiring? Uh, how, much, how many days off I have? How much salary you offer me? Can I have Saturday, Sunday off? Uh, these things in me, it, it never exists, this kind of question. I never uh, ask this kind of question, honestly. Um, I just see the position. And I see the potential of the establishment and they say, I can learn, I can grow there. So whatever is the offer, I will take it. Uh, and and we, we definitely go forward. And So you got the job? Uh, we got the job. We got the job. You came uh, to beautiful Dubai. And I finally landed to Dubai. So it was 2018. So now if I talk to you, you are now the head chef, but I want to talk to you about 2022. On the day that you received the Michelin star, because for, for most chefs who working in fine dining establishments, one of the things to really tick off is to, is to get a coveted Michelin star. Now you're not only in the Michelin guide, you also in go and Milot which again is a phenomenal global food guide. But I, I want to just talk to you about when you were in that sort of presentation where, with all Michelin there, all the chefs there, did you know that you were going to get the star? <laughs> Definitely not. 
definitely. So how were you feeling at that time? How 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 how, how were the nerves inside? The nerve was definitely high pressure. Uh, you know, I start uh, uh, when the first trip in French. I say it's come in my mind uh, when I went when I was thirty. I really would like to travel the world. This was the idea that I had when I was 18. But of course, you don't know if you really can do it. This or what's going what's going to happen during is uh, your uh, your life. Of course, no. But this was the the things that I say. I say I would like to travel the world when I have in 30 years old. So looking uh, at today, maybe I didn't do all the world. But I was able to arrive in such great countries, uh, always with my mind of my mentality of uh, discover uh, culture and people throughout food. Um, French, uh, Shanghai as well helped me to enter in the world of uh, uh, Michelin because I have the pleasure to meet Chef Pierre Gagnier. Okay. Of course, during the years I was studying Italian chef, like uh, Gualtiero Marchesi is, uh, is the chef who really uh, inspired me to, to do the uh, Italian cuisine, to travel the world. Gualtiero Marchesi first, Massimo Bottura after, uh, reading his book, uh, listen him to talk about the, be curious, be passionate, mm. uh, you know, love people, love food. Uh, and this is what I carried during my experience, I always traveling, cooking and serving food to the people and see them happy. This was, uh, I think, is the most beautiful things to to interact with people in our job. Absolutely. So I, I meet in Shanghai Chef Pierre Gagnier. Uh, I have the pleasure to cook for him in, because he came in our restaurant and after he asked, because he had one restaurant there in Shanghai also, so he had this annual visit in this restaurant. So I went to have the dinner with our uh, owners in the restaurant. He had one set menu you know, for two years, like all the celebrity chefs do around the world when they have his restaurant. They visit every year. And I never talk about, uh, always we work for, uh, for, for make the guest happy. Okay, but we never think about Michelin star. It's a dream. See always the chef go to the stage. It's a little bit, uh, you know, for me, be there here today. You know, see all your podcast, all your uh, uh, chef sit in front of you. And now today I'm here. It's a great uh, uh, pleasure for me. I mean, I'm very glad and say really thank you for uh, having me. <laughs> the, the moment of this, we received the, the, the email Already this moment was... Uh, was uh, Okay, so, so there was no phone call. There was a direct email. Was, you have been invited yes. to the Michelin the guide. Michelin guide. Yes. Okay, so yes. that email, I just wanted to ask you, was it um, one day before? Was it one week before? We. It was a week before. Oh, my God. So yeah. you were already yeah. thinking, okay. You know, you know, the time in 2022, uh, a month before... All the scene, the destination, by great yes. culinary destination. Of course. Before the star, after the star, much more. Yes. <laughs> after the star, Guemillo and all the mm -hmm. big names. 50 best. Yeah. yeah. 50 yeah. best, everything. Okay. Um, all the chefs, all the people start to talk about maybe Michelin guy used to, he will come to Dubai, he will come to Middle East. It was just a voice, no? Everyone was. Rumors. It was just yes. rumors, but yes. nobody knows if it was real. When is going to happen? So we, we, we really didn't, don't know when the date was being released. Okay. Mm, couple of months in advance. We, right. We didn't know yet. And after, uh, <laughs> of course, what the official name, uh, official date to be released, the big announcement came. Huh? I really would see all our, all us as a chef, all the colleagues in general. Everybody was. Uh, everybody, how we feel when yeah. we really see the announcement in the. So then, the Dubai. on the day before you even received, or, or was it, before it was announced that you received the star, yeah. when you were sitting there, how 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 were you feeling? Bad, honestly, <laughs> in terms of uh, always bad, but. Um, 
like what the night like, we like finish nervous or so nervous really bad in term i would say nervous uh we finished the service in the night uh -huh. of course the mail came the invitation was the date was being released and the announcement was in dubai opera at the time right the first year was being in dubai opera uh, we finished the service uh, i start to scare i don't know why this uh, my my body start to trembling uh, uh -huh. sweat I, I finished my service in the restaurant, I went home, I cannot uh, I just take shower, I cannot, I, I need to sleep tomorrow, we need to wake up early, but this was already stress, I need yeah, to yeah, sleep, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to sleep, man. I, yeah, the more you think about it, the, yes. the more awake you are. <laughs> <laughs> and this I spend my night, like, think about I need to sleep, oh, but it was yeah, 4, yeah. 5, 6 a.m. Oh my God. Okay, I need to try to eat something, I cannot even eat. The feeling was like uh, I, w I won't eat something to be ready for the day. I cannot eat for the uh, what's going on in the mind, ready for the attend the event in the morning. Okay. Uh, really, <laughs> honestly, um, okay, we change, I change. Uh, I really try to have breakfast at, at home, one coffee. Uh, just many had one coffee. Which was not a good uh, <laughs> idea. <laughs> it was not a good yeah, idea. The blood pressure was yes. already <laughs> through the roof. Okay. Yes. Uh, the moment of the we, we enter in the arena in the in the opera, I say, guy, I'm going to collapse. Here. Uh, I went to collapse. I was, I was see, wow. looking around. All the colleagues were there, so that is only me that I'm feeling this uh, this uh, feeling. Or yeah. after uh, you know, okay, at this uh, for the presenter and start to introduce the yeah. event and the everything I start to everything start to calm down okay uh, yes uh, when they announced our name uh, here they say no here guys I cannot uh, <laughs> I need to change my mindset I cannot uh, collapse I need to <laughs> of course we need to take this uh, of course as a uh, happiness moment uh, of the life of the life. Uh, beside me was uh, uh, our executive chef, uh, Fabian was there, so it was a big act to him, so big uh, boost, no? Yeah, so, of course. Uh, and yeah, uh, so let's oh, wow. went up to the stage, uh, see what uh, what come out from, from our uh, <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was quite, quite, it was quite it was an emotional. It was so emotional, you know, yes. uh, and, and because the team have yeah. worked extremely hard. I mean, everybody involved, it, yeah. you must have been extremely yeah. proud. Yes. And, yes. and everybody could see that on your face, mm. uh, you know. Yeah. But but and then, as you quite rightly said, after the star, go Milo, I mean, and so many things came afterwards. Yeah. But what would you say then now, you've had some time to sort of mature the food. What it, What is the, the DNA or the bloodline of the food for Armani Ristorante? Yeah, the bloodline, you know, um, for what I say, the moment of the, yes, star Guvio came, this was a point of start for me. Okay. For me, for us, for all the team, is a start. Uh, we really start to to keep or work hard, you know, to keep, uh, come out with the ideas, how we can make the food as delicious as possible, as uh, fresh, uh, you know, in we 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 just keep uh, doing what we have done. You know, always our idea was our philosophy of food is hundred percent Italian cuisine for the brand, for the place that we are. Uh, our cuisine in Armani Ristorante, you know, is not like influenced by fusion, sure. you know, some uh, influenced by however I re I've been work all around the world, but. How I use this experience in my menu today is only in the technique gotcha. that we apply, not in the product and everything, because our product is uh, 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 is Italian cuisine. So Italian play, using, of course, uh, thanks to the great work of Dubai, uh, they are doing now to grow local. Uh, we are start, of course, to... Uh, to support the local farm using some uh, local vegetable, uh, sometimes local fish, and of course, source item from Italy, uh, from all around Mediterranean area, I can say, no? Um, but mainly the food and the, the heart 
is Italian. Is Italian. Yes, and and yes, is it? Uh, would you would you call it modern Italian, or is it yeah. or is it mainly focused on the most incredible flavors? Yeah, most incredible flavor with the uh, Italian cuisine with modern touch. Okay, I really like to reinterpret the some dishes. You know, some is classic, just reinterpreted, but some is new as well. So uh, created by 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 me, uh, work with uh, affinate with the team, and after confirm. Uh, put on the menu. You know, I really love uh, uh, try discover new pasta shape, example, for the ravioli, uh, working always constantly with the new feeling combination of uh, flavor to add inside our ravioli. You know, our pasta fresca is, uh, is made fresh in house. Um, our starter are using with the only seasonal ingredient. You know, uh, not only the vegetable, but also the fish. Fish, he, have, he has his own season as well. So we really need to focus today on, uh, yes, it's quite, today we are uh, in the uh, time that everything is needs to be available, okay? If we focus only on the season, everything is available today. We find tomatoes in uh, January, we find zucchini in January, or we find, all kind of ingredient all around the the months okay no all the all around the year but my uh, mindset is respect the season so we need to buy the pumpkin in october we need to find the pumpkin in october even I'm, i know that we can find uh, in january march uh, july i know everything is available today but it's not uh, because there is demand and everything but we find the pumpkin, the truffles, um, the chestnut, the porcini mushroom, now currently in this season, from uh, October to January, in our current menu. We already focus on the spring, focusing, I mean, start to sourcing uh, fresh produce for the next season as well. So the menu is really seasonal? Menu is really seasonal. Wow, yes. Yes. that's fantastic. Yes. We uh, when when you work in the season, the ingredient is uh, cheap, but cheap. Sorry, the word don't misunderstand. Cheap is not mean. Uh, it's, it's low cost. It's low cost, it's and, low cost and, and it's, it's, and it's best, right? Is the best is in the best of his flavor. Exactly. Uh, this is. I mean, this, this we need to follow. No, uh, I, ca I cannot put one menu with the pumpkin soup in uh, in June. I cannot yeah. put pumpkin soup in June or. Or May, or July. Or July. Yes. yes no, yes. the pumpkin is not uh, is not giving me his uh, hundred percent of uh, her property uh, benefit. Of course, of course. <laughs> but look, so, one thing I wanted to sort of discuss, and we touched upon just before we started recording. You know, you've followed the trends of chefs, and what I mean by followed the trends is that you specifically studied different languages, different chefs. Um, you, you were not linked to social media. You really wanted to study as much as you can and learn from those chefs. Yeah. Now, in this modern age, there is no way that you can ignore social media. But one thing that um, I get a lot of, I talk to a lot of chefs, a lot of restaurateurs about, the challenge within social media, and as you touched upon, hard work with sort of different generations. What's been your biggest challenge when when working as a head chef and you're recruiting apprentices or younger chefs? For sure, we this cannot be avoided. The powerful, the importance of social media today is the most powerful uh, communication channel there, there is. Uh, this is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and we need to live with. Uh, we are all have social media, uh, but uh, what, what uh, we need to keep in mind that we cannot lose the uh, focus on the real, uh, on the real everyday operation. Exactly. You know? uh, yes, uh, the recruit uh, process today maybe every young generation is a little bit more difficult to. Uh, to let them understand the importance of our work. Because we cannot become chef in a month, we cannot become chef in 
drilled one uh, TV show. Uh, no, work in our kitchen is a really commitment that you start uh, since a young age and you, you work all your uh, process uh, during the years. It takes really a lot of time. It takes time to, to achieve, to, to grow, to grow, mm -hmm. I can say. Uh, so there is still a great young chef of course, uh, won't uh, learn. They are very uh, commit to work in the kitchen. Uh, I I'm quite uh, happy with the team that we have in the uh, restaurant. But of course, they have everything they have a circle. You know, today, <laughs> <laughs> our, honestly, our team, they always good. Like every two years, he finished the circle, okay. was, uh, which is makes sense actually. Yes. You know, me uh, today, I turn today this year I turned five years in the company, and I really wish uh, same motivation as the first day. Really, I'm uh, happy. Um, but the the, the the line cook, I can say, you know, the chef, the party. They, I I see, I was in her place. So every two years is the uh, right time to them to visit, to discover new experience, to do experience. So it's good already that they will stay two years. Yes. And not less than this. But also it gives them the opportunity to do every section. Yeah. Um, under you, for example. Um, but but yes, I do I do agree with you. I think, um, of course, social media must, and we live it every day. It's an important part of life now. But when it comes to kitchen operations, I think for me, I'm the type of chef where I'm just like beginning a service, phones off, lock them away. Absolutely. And we just simply focus yes. attention to detail on the guest and attention to detail on the food. Absolutely. You yes. know, that's, that's, that's me. Yes. Um, but, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a di I think sometimes it's a difficult relationship to balance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at times, yeah. you know? Yeah. So look, Giovanni, now we have come to what we call the quick fire questions, all right? So I've, I've put some questions down for you and I want you to just tell me first thing that comes to your head. Okay, so there's no wrong or right. So the first quick fire question for you. Pasta or risotto? Pasta. Oh. Olive oil or balsamico? Extra virgin olive oil. All right. <laughs> Parmesan or truffle? Wow, I can say Parmesan and truffle. <laughs> <Parmigiano> <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> Who would you say are your top three culinary heroes? And they don't need to be chefs. Culinary heroes. Uh, yeah. Gualtiero Marchesi is, is a chef. He's, uh, he's the, we call it the father of uh, modern Italian cuisine. <laughs> and, and my grandmothers. But amazing. Yes, amazing. What would you say is or your funniest kitchen story or incident that you have either seen or you were involved in? No, well, uh, when when they used to give me task and uh, the task has to be finished in two hours. It was uh, when you have some like uh, 20 kg of fish to scale. I think the task I went to spend on my duty, try to to finish this uh, this 20 kg of fish. So instead of two hours, I will spend uh, five hours trying to clean fish. <laughs> uh, this was since the uh, beginning of uh, of the of the career. You know, it was uh, it was so long. It was so difficult to finish this task uh, in such a, such a short time. Yeah. So that's why I got a lot of... Uh, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, <laughs> may, maybe you didn't understand uh, what they were saying. Yeah, yeah so, uh, I think they, they, they asked me to move on. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. Now, at the moment for you, what are your top three... Uh, favorite cuisines Italian cuisine Italian Italian cuisine number yes. one I don't want to be the part but yes uh, of course no yes. uh, this is Italian for you cuisine. Um, number two um, number two is um, you know French uh -huh. cuisine yeah 
also today, you know, French, Italian, Mediterranean. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, Japanese cuisine, but all for the way how they use as much the ingredient has to be fresh as possible to be served to the guest. The respect they have for the ingredient is uh, just admirable. Exactly. Just admirable. that is that is so true. And you know what? That another thing I'm sort of seeing a lot of at the moment is that people don't seem to to, to respect the ingredients. They just think it comes off the. The, the back of the lorry or the back of the van and then they can do whatever but they don't seem to understand the huge story behind getting this beautiful fish or getting this beautiful pumpkin or the season of the mushrooms so I think that's something else that we really should touch upon yes you know yes. that's really big you know James allow me to say this uh, part um, all what I the example is the best form of teacher okay so what I always say, I try to teach to all people who work with me, and I always keep in myself, our job start where the farmer job finish, the fisherman job finish, uh, the, the, the fromage affiner job finish, you know? So the, the farmer spend one year to produce uh, a vegetable, uh, it can be one, uh, Asparagus, one mushroom, mushroom is small wild, but pumpkins mm. or vegetable mm. in general. Our job start when the, the product ingredient is ready. So only for this, the job that farmers spend to create this such a beautiful vegetable, we need to respect this ingredient in the kitchen and make this uh, uh, tasty, like you see. Of course, the so, most delicious. That's yeah. Good. But that's your job as a chef. So, right? so before do any kind of cuisine, fine dining, not fine dining, we really need to know the story of every single ingredient. And after we can create dish. Yeah, Because we cannot create dish without know what we are putting on the I plate. Agree. And that's such a powerful message. Yeah. You know, that's a really fantastic piece of advice as well. You know, so thank you very much. Yeah. Now, talking adv advice, Giovanni, what advice would you give a 16-year-old Giovanni Papi? Uh, pursue your dream. Uh, be curious. Because curiosity is what push really to, to discover uh, the life, I can say, in every kind of business. Our job, we discover people, we discover food. So we need to be passionate, we need to be curious. And uh, of course, we need to love, always positive, you know, love the life, enjoy the, uh, love people around you. Uh, be always positive and perceive your dream. Love that. Now, Giovanni, if um, people wanted to connect with you through social media, how can they do that? Yeah, um, of course, I, uh, I'm a resident chef in Armani Ristorante uh, inside Burj Khalifa, tallest building in the world. Iconic. The iconic building in the world. Um, Giovanni Pap is, uh, is, is my name, uh, and Armani Ristorante is the place where I work. So, okay. uh, so I will put all of those details uh, yes. in the show notes for Armani Hotel Dubai, of course. Absolutely. Well, Giovanni, all that's left for me to say is that we, we've had a really incredible journey uh, talking about your childhood, your grandmothers, how you were on the table helping early morning, your education in the kitchen, uh, the first few years working in, in, in Sardinia in the beautiful cookery school, and then going off to France, Côte d'Azur, different French chefs. I mean, fantastic. Then uh, again, lots of different travel, Luxembourg, Australia, China. I mean, fantastic. Coming all the way over to the Middle East. Always, of course, speaking to your mom and saying, hi, I'm here and going again. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then of course, we, we, we cannot ignore Michelin and, and that's that beautiful, special day. And the fact that you know, the, the, the food that you guys are producing at Ristorante Armani is phenomenal. It's some of the best in the Middle East. It really, really is. It's a fantastic place. And it's not just about because it's in the, located in Burj Khalifa, but it's because of all the passion and the love that you put 
into those dishes and as well as what the team are doing. Um, pasta or risotto, I like it. Extra virgin olive oil, very good. Yes. Yeah. Parmesan and truffle, okay, but I love it. But look, Giovanni, all I want to say really is please carry on pushing the Italian flag in the beautiful food that you do because it is really fantastic and I know that you're going to do some phenomenal things and keep doing them and from all of us here at the thank Chef you, JKP yes. podcast thank you thank so you. much for coming on to the show it's been fantastic thank you James thank you so much from the heart I uh, really want to say you know uh, one month ago Italian cuisine has been nominated as a UNESCO heritage so we have received the candidate the nomination for this wow um, I really hope as a Italian in Dubai or every Italian chef outside of Italy be to have to be proud of this moment and then we really push to respect our culture outside of Italy and uh, I'm pretty sure one day Italian he will Italian cuisine will be the part of the UNESCO heritage because uh, he really deserves to do this thank you so much thank you